Welcome, my dear friends, to the Friday special episode of the Mind of Roba podcast. I'm your host, Roba Zeddin, and I invite you to join me on this journey where I hope I can bring a smile to your face. In today's episode, it will be all about you. Yes, you, my family, friends, and all those who listen to me and support me. We will be sharing meaningful comments and private messages from all of you. These include vulnerable stories that were shared with me and now will be shared with you. I want you to know that without you, I wouldn't be where I am now. And with you, I can reach the sky. Each word and every phrase we share today has been carefully chosen to awaken the dormant dreams, hopes, and aspirations that reside deep within us all. It is my sincere desire that this episode becomes a respite from the chaos of the world, offering you a momentary escape into the world of pure imagination, where happiness and peace intertwine. This is a song that my mother has sent to me. It's called Lean On Me by Bill Withers. And it's covered by Music Travel Love. <sighs> I can't explain how warm this makes my heart. I love my mother so much. And I hope that God always keeps her safe. And I love her for all the support and love that she has provided to me since I was a child. And so, on March 1st, 2021, I shared a poem titled, A Letter to Mother, in which I share all my raw feelings towards my lovely mother. I have never thought I would be sharing such close and vulnerable stories with the world, but I am super glad that I did. Many of you resonated deeply with this poem, and here are some of the reactions I got that I will never forget. An account that goes by Midnight Musings underscore RT, owned by the lady called Anna, sent me a comment that says, Roba, this is so beautiful and moving that you made me cry. My mother passed a little over two years ago, and if I could spend another day with her, this is everything I would say to her. I read it out loud, hoping she heard me. Thank you for this. When I first read that comment, I remember crying, and I was replying to her message, in which I said, I cried writing this. I teared up reading your comment, my heart is with you. And yes, she heard you. She knows how you feel and thank you for being here. Thank you. These comments are the reason why I continue. If my words can comfort even one person, then my goal is reached. I got another heartfelt comment from Vidhi, and her current account is My Peril of Oblivion. I hope one day your child reads this and understands you, 
appreciates you and adore you. You are so kind. This peace is so pure, reflects your innocence and your love for your mother. She is so lucky to have you as a child who loves her so much. I hope you read her this poem and tell her how much you love her. I am so proud of you. Ah, <laughs> listening to these words again keeps me strong. It keeps me going. I am in love with writing and with sharing it with a, such a beautiful community. The last story for this poem that I'm going to share is about a girl named Tasabih, who goes to the same university as me, which is the University of Medical Sciences and Technology, UMST. We have a music club in university where you can also recite your poems. I met many of my friends from this club. I will never forget these days. One day, the head of the club told me, it's my turn to recite. And God, the room was full with people that day. I was actually very nervous, shaking my legs and all. I was still not used to public speaking. However, I just stared at the group of girls in front of me while reading. Their smiles and the way they were listening to me was very, very comforting. It calmed me down a bit. And as I was nearing the end of my poem, the sabih starts tearing up. I was shocked for what seemed to be hours, but in videos, it was just a few seconds when I actually stopped reciting. I continued because the girls nodded at me, telling me not to stop. <laughs> I will never forget this day. Tasabih, she, she has such a pure heart. I stood up to hug her directly after the poem ended. And then we talked about it. She told me she missed her mother, who was currently in another country. She said that all what I said resonated with her deeply and that's why she couldn't hold back her tears. I actually remember thanking her for that. It means so much to me until this day, two years later. Oh, and of course, I wouldn't forget my mother's reaction. She cried. <laughs> she hugged me so tightly and she still cries every time I read her this poem. She's as sensitive as me. I think all my poetry sensitivity came from her. And I'm so thankful for her. My family is my first source of support. My father and my brothers and my mother. I love them all so deeply. Sudan, Sudan, Sudan. Here will be multiple reactions I got from different poems I wrote for Sudan. Reactions that I will never forget. On May 24th of this year, 2023, I posted a poem of me finally meeting my parents after the war of Sudan. If you didn't know, a war started in Sudan on April 15th of this year. And five months has passed since then. My parents were not with me in Sudan at that time. It was only me, my older brother, Omar, and my younger brother, Awab. Without them, I don't think I would have survived this war. I'm so thankful for them. And alhamdulillah, thanks to God, we have successfully escaped the country and met our family once again. And so... I wrote my feelings while in tears and shared it with you all. All these poems will be shared to my story on Instagram at Mind of Rubo if you'd like to read them or listen to them. The pain of my own story will be told in other episodes since today is all about you. My friend Maryam, who also goes to university with me, sent me a DM of her replying to my poem. She told me, and I quote, My father is missing since yesterday morning, and I've been holding my tears and staying strong for my family. But the way you wrote your words broke me down. Allah la yahrimik min ahbabik, wijma'na bi habibna. Which translates to, May God never keep you away from your loved ones and brings us 
to our loved ones. I still cry when I reread this message. This war has affected every single Sudanese soul, and I write to ease these souls. I write so that you don't have to stress about making sense of your feelings. I will help you to do so by sharing my exact thoughts. There is this other poem titled, A Letter to My Dear Brother, which speaks about how he was willing to stay back if his visa procedure to Egypt did not work out. He was willing to let me and my younger brother escape alone. And of course, that never stood right with me. So I wrote this poem saying, If we are to die... Let's die together. Asma, one of my close friends and one of the people who always reads my words, told me, Ruba, I actually hate you for this. <laughs> Out of all the stuff you wrote that made me cry, this, this is just something else. It sure is painful to read my words, but if you don't feel, you will never heal, my loves. I know I say that my goal is to make people smile and that all I do now is make them cry. Ah, uh, let me explain. I want to make them smile in the long run. I don't want those smiles that only last when someone is looking at you. I want those smiles that come onto your face when you are alone. That is my goal, to make you smile through your own pain. Now five months has passed. And I posted a new poem that speaks exactly about emotions after such a long time. It has been almost half a year. Ruba, this video made me cry. And I repeated it more than two times, Allah. I don't know what to say, but we should say Alhamdulillah for everything and keep Sudan in our prayers. When inshallah uni will open soon, where everything will be better. Which reads... When translated to English fully, Ruba, this video made me cry, and I repeated it more than two times, I swear. I don't know what to say, but we should say thanks to God for everything, and keep Sudan in our prayers, and hopefully uni will open soon, and everything will be better. This message was sent to me by Hiba, a friend of mine since high school. I don't think people know how much these words mean to me. I literally keep all of these messages in a folder titled, What Makes Me Happy. I smile and cry every time I read these. I truly love you all, my friends and even those whom I don't personally know. I'm genuinely so proud of you and everything you are doing. Seeing you happy, confident, and finding yourself literally makes me happy myself. I am so, 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 so proud of you. Little one, always supporting and always got your back. Inshallah. I'll be waiting for them TV interviews next. Mashallah. Ah, Ma'ab. She is my role model. I want you all to say Allahumma barik before listening to what I will say. Ma'ab has got the beauty, the mind, and the personality. Her soul is made of pure white light. I have always looked up to her since fifth grade, and thankfully I still can stay by her side. For my role model to be my supporter is so crazy. She is also a very well-spoken lady who writes poems beautifully, and I just love her so much. I think of her as my big sister. Another message I want to share today is from Ragad, a girl that I am so lucky to call my best friend. In the first months of meeting this angel, she sent me this message. I hope the happy poems outnumber the sad ones. You deserve every bit of happiness this world has to offer, wallahi. I know we literally haven't known each other for long, but you really carved your way into my heart, and I'm so blessed to have met you. 
You bring so much happiness into everyone's lives and I hope you know I love and appreciate you a lot. I am very proud of you, cutie. Tee <laughs> I am so thankful to call her my friend, and all the others as well. This is a huge blessing from God, and I am so overwhelmed with love. Alhamdulillah, I can say that I have found the best gems of this world. There is this other girl who has my name, Roba, who is my other best friend whom I met in 8th grade. The type of friend whom no matter how long you haven't spoken to, your friendship never weakens. Every time we meet, we always have something to talk about. She brings joy into my life by just existing. My OG friend, Ruba. But hey, I'm the original version. <laughs> it's an inside joke. My girl group in uni consists of three beloved souls. Reem, Aya, and Isra. <laughs> Reem is my high school best friend who has been with me through the highs and lows. She always had my back, and for that, I am thankful. For being my supporter, my inspiration, and my everything. Aya and Isra are both my batchmates, who soon became the closest people to me. They always hyped me up, whether it was my poems or my architectural journey. They are the type to open my creative work and share it proudly with their families. And do you know what's the best feeling in the world? It's getting compliments from mothers. <laughs> Nothing can top that. And us four make a wonderful combination. May Allah always keep you close to me. I love you, Reem. I love you, Aya. I love you, Isra. The last person I want to mention today is COVID. He is the person who pushed me to start this podcast. He is the one who guided me onto how to make this all possible. He gave me ideas and created videos for me to post as for a beginning. There is nothing that I can say that would be enough to thank him. This podcast is for everyone to heal and to smile. Since that is my goal, me and you can make it come true. Thank you for always supporting me. If I mentioned all my favorite stories, this episode will never end. It's already been 17 minutes, or maybe 18. <laughs> um, so in the next Friday special, you can expect even more meaningful interactions, and even your name will be mentioned, inshallah. Once again, I will never be where I am without you all. And with you, I can reach the sky. As we reach the end of our journey together, I hope you feel inspired and refreshed as if you've taken a deep breath of the purest air that nature has to offer. Remember, Happiness is not a destination, but a state of mind we can cultivate and embrace. By nurturing our creativity and finding solace in poetry and storytelling, we can tap into a wellspring of joy that resides within us all. Thank you for joining me today on this voyage of words and emotions. I encourage you to carry the light of happiness and peace that you've discovered here into your daily lives, spreading it like ripples in a calm lake, touching the hearts and minds of those around you. Before we part ways, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to each and every one of you, my dear friends, for your unwavering support. Your presence makes this journey worthwhile, and I hope to continue inspiring you in the pursuit of happiness and the celebration of creativity. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, 
and leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on my Instagram account at mindofruba. Until we meet again, may your days be filled with joy, your hearts overflow with peace, and your minds dance with the beauty of endless possibilities. This has been the Mind of Ruba podcast, and I bid you farewell with a promise to return soon, ready to embark on another enchanting adventure together. Don't forget, the goal here is to smile.